All right, new day, new hair. So last I showed, we were getting the turbo kind of placed in here. And um, I'm probably gonna change this around a little bit. I uh, extended the stock one because with the supercharger, the belt was really close to it. And if it was rubbing, I didn't want the belt to rub through my radiator hose. So I would rather it rub on this. And you can see some belt, that's just from the slippage from the belt. But uh, yeah, so this is kind of getting in the way of the turbo of where I want to place it because of how I have these fans. This one's lower and that one's higher. I want to place it like up here somewhere and this is kind of getting in the way. So I am going to need to probably cut this, either just put a stock one back on and then weld this bung over here that goes to the OEM uh, 2UZ oil cooler and move this like up here so it's sticking up the side and just go down and around or just keep it right there and just shorten this down a little bit because I did like how it turned the hose this way just to keep everything away from the turbo. So like if I shorten this that much, that would go there and then come around. Um, so yeah. All right. We need to block off the idle air control valve because we are drive by wire is going to be the idle is going to be controlled by the electronic throttle body so no need for that another reason to go electronic throttle body is it just eliminates having to deal with the iac which is i just hate them <laughs> they're a pain sometimes Most, mostly because of that car but uh then we have to delete the egr stuff which is here and i think on the back side yeah there's this stupid thing too so block off all of those and it'll clean up that upper intake a lot. I extracted the studs, or not extracted, but I, I guess so. I took them out, all the studs for that, and then the EGR, um, just cause I'm gonna put bolts in there. So I kind of just got some scrap pieces of aluminum and just measured a rough cut for where this stuff's gonna go. So I'm gonna cut those out, clean them up, Put some gasket maker around there or use a cutout gasket if I have any and then bolt those on and it should clean up the intake nice. Alright, EGR blocked off, back EGR part which it's been so long since I worked on these motors I can't even remember what that goes to. But I, it's EGR related so blocked off, blocked off and then IAC is blocked off as well. Really cleans up the intake so let me get her on the car. And yeah, definitely looks a lot cleaner with all the junk gone, but it's not bolted down because I want to, I think, sandblast the intake inside and out. Not 100% sure because I just, the sand gets everywhere. With I have this little one right here, I think the intake would fit in there, but I also have a huge one uh, I could put outside, but I just don't, the sand gets everywhere, so... Might just uh, scotch bright pad it down and uh, just give it a paint job or something. I don't know, man. Getting a little too picky there. Maybe not. I don't know. I just want to go fast. You know what I'm saying? All right. We, me, not we, there ain't we around here. I chopped that coolant passage that I was talking about off so that's basically that is the stock location just had a little uh i don't know bump around it to hold that hose on from sliding um so let me get the turbo in there and i'll show you guys like how that clears up some stuff all right set you guys right there grab the turbo and i want the placement about right there your angle ain't the best, but it's the best I can do for now. So, oh, I can show you guys up here. I need to like almost build a bracket to hold the turbo where I want it to sit. Um, but anyways, so that turbo, it's sitting about like right up here on the height wise. And that's right where this hose is coming out. And then I still have that nipple um, hanging out the bottom that went to the oil cooler I talked about. So I'm thinking of just going like that. About like that. Um, I might even cut off 
can't decide. Maybe I should just maybe I can just tilt this up a little bit. Um, actually, tilting it up would probably work because I need to go up and over the turbo anyways, and tilting it up will angle that. Let's see, get under there, away from this pulley, because I, I got a hose running down. So, yeah, let me see how that looky. So, with me wanting to go around the turbo, I was thinking maybe I could weld this on backwards like that, and uh, then get just the rest to do a rubber hose. Um, because I was thinking about cutting it shorter, like I talked about. Um, which still could work. I'm just not entirely sure until the turbo's done. So I'm gonna set that aside. And we just got the 2.25 inch um, exhaust tubing for running the rest of the exhaust system. So I have this like big U right now, just kind of resting there. I haven't done anything with it. I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it. And honestly, that's not bad, but I'm gonna brainstorm a lot more. Just hook it down there, cut that U obviously so it's shorter. Then I guess not really an issue, but something I noticed was uh, these uh, oil, or co there are coolant lines that run to the oil cooler. Um, they are kind of in the way of just everything. <laughs> But we're going to work around that. So these, this one goes, I think, let me see. I can't remember exactly. This one goes, oh yeah, this one goes right here. And then this isn't even the oil cooler. This is for the oil pressure sensor in my car, which I might even go to a, like an actual sensor instead of a gauge. That's a mechanical one, but I do like the mechanical ones better, but whatever. So this hose, I can always kind of twist it up more so it's more out of the way. Run that U. Connect it here, obviously shorten the U. I got my T4 flange coming, and I forgot to mention, I am keeping this completely twin scroll. I was doing some research, and it's all about like exhaust pulses and everything. It gets a little bit more complicated when you're on a V engine, just because of, you're not really, I don't know, it kind of gets confusing, because with a four cylinder, you're, you're doing cylinder one and three, depending on the firing order, if, if it was, the firing order was one, three, two, four. You would collect two, three, and then two and four until they're separate and then go into the turbo as a twin scroll. Because of how the exhaust pulses are, you get rid of like overlap and all the weird pulses that happen. And so you get a quicker spool up, about 500, 800 RPM, depending on turbo and engine and all displacement, all that kind of stuff. So like I said, it gets more complicated when you have a V engine because you're it just gets a little more complicated but overall i think it's going to spool up faster than it would if it was a non-twin scroll and i already have a twin scroll turbo so i may as well utilize the twin scrollness of it if that's even a word twin scrollness of it so that being the case i ordered a t4 flange and i'm going to try and like bend this in the vise um to get it that square and then like and then weld it to the T4 flange. Um, so I'm gonna give that a go first. If I can't, I'll have to spend the money and buy one. They're like 140 bucks for a flange with the duels coming out. So yeah, anyways, that was a big rant. So I got my tubing. I'm gonna wait to do this until the turbo is placed. Um, just so I don't weld that and then have to redo it. So yeah. Now that I have my tubing here, I can start doing that. And hopefully my flange is here by the weekend, which should be like three more days. And then I can really get the whole exhaust system finished. I'm also picking up some guy locally scrapping some three inch um, stainless steel tubing, whole bunch for super cheap. So I'm gonna order, get some of that three inch for a three inch down pipe. And so I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna route that down pipe going down as well. So, Lost to figure out now that I have the exhaust. So yeah. We got a little mount thing going on to hold the turbo and I think that's where I want it. Um, I just shoved this rod between the upper and the lower intake manifold and just put a strap on it and had some wire so it wouldn't twist. Kind of ghetto, whatever. If it works, it works. So. I got 
this pipe taped on like right at the joint so that's where i think it'll sit i think i'm gonna cut this one shorter so that bend comes earlier grab a u and bring that u around connect them right there and then this side will go up to the t4 flange obviously um i'm gonna cut the u a lot shorter it says it hangs so low but you get the idea cut this one a little shorter it goes down and then there's U and then up to the T4 flange. And then this side, we have this 90 degree that I'm gonna go like right there. And then uh, cut it shorter, obviously, so it sits up a little bit higher. And then just a small little bent tube that's gonna go there. And I'll just steal that bend from uh, one of my the extra pipes that I have, which I have plenty now, because if I were to buy just a few of those pre ones, it was, I got those for I think $60, like shipped and everything on Amazon. So it was cheaper if I just uh, bought the kit than like individual bent ones. And I didn't know how much I needed. So I got it, is what it is. But uh, so in case I even make a mistake, I got extras. But yeah, so that sh I don't think should be terrible, but I don't want to start cutting all of it yet until my actual flange comes for the T4 because on the bottom of the T4 flange, you got your two slots for the twin scroll. And I'm going to have to, I talked about this a little bit ago, bending them so it could fit inside of there. And then I'm going to stick them out a little bit and then weld the inside. And I want that to be welded or V-band to these pipes here so the t4 is going to come down here it's going to have two pipes that come down a little bit and then connect there and i might either just weld them or v-band clamp them v-band is what i'm leaning towards just because if i had a v-band like right there and a v-band here it'd be easy to remove i guess i couldn't remove yeah i could remove one side and then remove the other side is it having to remove the whole thing together which i don't even know I'm, yeah, I'd probably be able to come out, but it's just more of a pain. So that's probably the move. So my T4 flange comes, I think it said tomorrow. So I'll just wait till tomorrow, but because there's other things I can do right now. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay, the T4 flange came in super thick, half an inch. So no worries about warping, definitely when welding or even the heat. So I bent this tube in my vise just a lot this way and then a little bit this way to square it out a little bit and uh if it's pretty good um once i get it welded i'm just going to uh, take my dremel and just smoothen out this a little bit so the transition's a little bit smoother but yeah so that's pretty good trying to figure out how to weld it probably going to do inside all the way around because outside there's no real way to weld two pipes next to each other right here. And there's, well, unless I welded all the way outside here, then welded on the inside over to here, have a little bit of overlap. But I'll probably just do inside all the way around and do a little bit outside just to strengthen it. But now that I have this, I can kind of um, get the rest of this done so i'm going to start cutting this tubing up and then getting it to work so last i talked um about this was i'm going to use the 90 here and then a u to go here and then up, back and up so i'm going to start cutting that stuff up and getting it ready to be fully welded so i'll show you the process of that okay i cut the u shorter here i pressed the end up kind of similar to that you just have it tack welded on the flange then I cut this 90 right there, had to tape that little extension on, and obviously it's touching the fan, so when it's um, cockeyed, so that needs to be shorter, and it'll kind of twist the whole thing forward, but that's the general idea of this first one. So just need to make sure I have enough room for intercooler pipe, and that's gonna come down through here, um, because once this sucks in closer, the turbo twists, it gets closer to the engine, so I see to make sure I have enough room between the AC compressor and the exhaust to run uh, intercooler piping through. But yeah, 
not too shabby. All right, fast forward a good amount of time, maybe a day or something. The turbo is sits by itself. Uh, not tight. Everything's tack welded. Um, this side came out pretty good. Um, there's one small gap right here that I want to try to close. Um, and then this side, I got this gap that I want to um, try to close somehow without filling it. But uh, it sits on its own. So that's sick. Um, looks like, I mean, I got whole hand width there and this also isn't bolted so it's gonna get sucked in a little bit more but uh, and then I have enough room to run my intercooler piping to come down these lines are gonna be deleted from the power steering so come down around and over here and then I can run my intake and I'll probably just go back down into my previous hole I had so yeah it I didn't film a lot because I was just Cutting and fitting, cutting and fitting, cutting and fitting, and changing this, changing that, but came out pretty good. Actually pretty hyped about it. Um, this runner length isn't, my biggest worries was this runner being way longer than this one, because this side is pretty much a direct shot, but um, it's actually not too much longer. It's really that U is the only extra piece, so I'm not too worried about that, because I, before I had a like, big U down, so I had room for the intercooler piping, but this worked out good. Um, I still have room to run pipe here and then go down to the hole for the in intake um so yeah pretty sick um next thing i need to do is i want to weld stainless the correct way um so you're supposed to back purge basically put argon inside the tube so you don't get that popcorn look let's see if i have an example i mean I don't have an exact example, but just so you don't get all black and dirty on the inside. So they make flux paste because I don't want to buy the whole setup for the purge system. And I'm going to show you guys this because I got a hack for flux paste. And then I can finish welding the turbo kit because obviously I don't want to weld this up and then have all those, uh, I guess it's not called popcorn, it's called uh, sugaring. I don't want all the sugaring inside. So I'm going to flux paste it and then weld it. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably do a little more tweaking, try to fill in some of those gaps a little better. But overall, it's looking pretty sick, not going to lie. So that's going to be it. Next video, we'll be welding the whole thing probably. And probably doing the oil drain and feed because I didn't finish doing that. And yeah, yeah, yeah.